All right, welcome back to the channel, everybody. Uh, Lucas from Mars here, and today we're going to be doing a very special episode here, opening up, and it's a preview of this new franchise that we're doing here. This is a franchise rebuild on LB the Show 22. So, uh, a new game and a new series here beginning, and today we're just going to go over this roster here. And we're going to kind of go over how this series, how this franchise rebuild is going to work. And we're going to preview the roster for you today. So today will be a quick video. Um, but and then we get to opening day here. And in a couple of days from today, uh, we post in this video on Sunday. And the opening day game will come out probably a couple of days after that. So here we are. This is the Miami Marlins franchise rebuild here on MLB The Show 22. Um, I just really like the Marlins jerseys, for one. But I also like this this uh, it's this roster is very interesting. And as you can tell, look at this pitching here for this roster. This roster is not, you know, not too bad. I mean, they're ranked 15th, so they're kind of middle rank in the league rank wise. Uh, and this pitching, this pitching is very solid. They have some very young pitchers here on this team, and their ace is Pablo Lopez, who is really, really good here in this game. Got 87 home run per nine, and really good stats across the board. His lowest statistic is his K per nine, which is at 62. Um, it be, got B potential, only 26 years old, and pitched in 102 innings last year, and was excellent for them with a 307 ERA and a 112 whip. This is a, you know, this is a big guy, I mean, arbitration next year, and so we'll, we'll keep him around, hopefully, for this franchise, but he's this team's ace, he's this team's best pitcher, and he's a super solid uh, pitcher here, so, you know, this, this is a team that's got those young pitchers, and so I think the challenge of this team is when these pitchers, when all these pitchers start to become really good, we're going to have to kind of choose who we want to keep on this roster. And some of these pitchers, maybe they don't perform like we expect them to. Like, you know, they have good potential and they seem like they have good ratings, but they don't. They just don't play very well in sim. And so we have to kind of figure it out. Uh, I think this team's offense needs a lot of work, and we'll get to that offense later. But their second pitcher here is Sandy Alcantara, who is also 26. And he's also got B potential, but he's a little bit lower rated. He did pitch. Well, very well last year, and he's one of the more long-term contract guys on this team. Um, a lot of these guys on this team are very have very short contracts and are in arbitration years, especially pitching-wise. But Sandy Alcantara has a has a contract, and he's signed for the next four seasons there. So, the big prospect here, and the big guy that we're going to really focus on to grow in this franchise is Taylor, is Trevor Rogers. Uh, last year in 133 innings, he was excellent with the 2.64 ERA and a 1.15 WHIP. I mean, this guy's really good. 79 overall, only 24 years old, and has eight potential. This is the guy that we are going to try and build this starting rotation around. Uh, he has just he's just been excellent, and he's got some he's just got some really great ratings, and so hopefully we'll see Trevor Rogers bloom into a really, really good pitcher here in this franchise. We'll see. Um, you know, there's a potential that he could maybe not pitch as well as we think he could in this franchise, but he's got great potential. So we'll see what he does. And then here is Sixo Sanchez, who's kind of saw his potential kind of drop from the last and we search games, but you know, he's still only twenty three. He's still got B potential. He's still very, very good there. Uh, then you have Eliezer Hernandez, who's, you know, he's just kind of all right here. He does also have B potential. Still pretty young at 26, but not necessarily the highest rated of guys here. Uh, then Jesus Lazardo is, you know, kind of a similar with sense. He's got B potential. Uh, you know, he's 24. But last year, 95 innings was not very good at all. And really, you know, limited action, but he has not been that great in his MLB time. Uh, then... In the farm system here, Max Meyer, he's going to be starting the season in the in the minors in triple and double A. Uh, I might call him up to triple A at some point in the season. He might get a shot at the show this year. Well, not I'm not sure. We'll have to see what he does in the minors. But uh, man, Max Meyer is really good. He's really exciting and a exciting prospect there at 23 years old and a potential. And then a Edward Cabrera, also another eight potential guy here at 23 as well, and he will be starting in AAA. So, 
you see this pitching here, and also we got Uri Perez, also who is 18, um, super young, and has B potential there as well uh, at the bottom below Cabrera, and he will probably, I'll move him up to double A uh, when the season gets going. But yeah, I mean, you look at this, you look at this pitching staff, and it's really, really young. I think the oldest guy, you know, in that starting rotation, the oldest guy there is, it's just. He's not. I think it's 26, 27 years old. I mean, you have you have such young potential in that in that uh, pitching rotation. So that's going to be the really exciting thing is just seeing these pitchers for this team develop into superstars in this game. So catching here, we're going to move over to the offense and catching for this team is Jacob Stallings. You know, the offense for him is not necessarily his strongest his his strength, but he's got really good defensive ratings. So. Uh, we'll see. He's just kind of going to be an average catcher in this game in the sim. And Jesus Aguilar is their best offensive bat uh, ratings-wise. And so, you know, we'll see. He's got 83 contact against um, righties. And he did pretty well last season, 22 homers, 93 RBIs. He was their best offensive hitter. Uh, I don't know how long I'm going to keep Jesus Aguilar around on this roster, though. He is going to be a free agent next year. And he's going to be requiring, you know, he's going to be demanding probably – the same contract to what he has now, you know, eight million to ten million dollars. So we'll see if we want to resign Aguilar. Um, I'm actually not. We're not. I'm not sure if I want to resign at Jesus Aguilar next year. But I guess it's really going to depend on um, him and what he does this season. Uh, so Jazz Chisholm here. I actually think his ratings are his ratings right now in this save are actually buffed a lot. Um, I think I'm going to actually update these ratings to what they are like when you load up the saved rosters because in the saved rosters, I guess this roster that I'm using has Jazz Chisholm's ratings really high and I will actually go in there and I'm going to change Jazz Chisholm's ratings and I'm going to make him a little bit worse, but you know he's still like that cornerstone offensive player that this Marlins team is going to be building around in this franchise. So kind of ignore what his ratings are right now. Uh, but he's still going to be 24. He's going to be a potential. And he's going to be the offensive centerpiece uh, to this team. And we'll see how he develops over the course of this franchise. So third base is going to be Joey Rundo, who's got good contact against right. He's got a good uh, vision there at 90. Over, at 90. Uh, but honestly, not expecting too much offensively from him. And then we go over to shortstop here real quick, and we got Miguel Rojas, who's just kind of okay, not anything super special there, not that great. Uh, Jose Devers, you know, he's decent, um, 22, and B potential. Then Khalil Watson here, um, he's, a, he's a draft pick recently for the Marlins, and he's got A potential. So I have kind of upped his ratings by a couple here already, as you can see, um, I just kind of wanted him to get a better baseline on his stats, but he's 18, and he's a 64 overall, so he's a guy in that farm system to kind of watch out for uh, for the future. And then Jose Salas, um, you know, maybe potential guy here. He's only 18 as well with B potential, so we'll see. Uh, then we get to the outfield here, and in left field, this is going to be Jorge Soler. And now Jorge Soler, C potential. 30 years old, I mean, the power for him is off the charts. He is their best power hitter, and, you know, we'll see how long I want to kind of keep him around, and we'll see what he does this year. I'm kind of worried about the contact. I don't think the average is not going to be high. He's not going to be hitting, you know, 250 or anything like that. So I think for that reason, I don't really know if I – I don't really like Jorge Soler all that much. Um, he is signed for three years. So unfortunately, you know, if he does do well, we're going to be kind of stuck with – Solaire uh, for at least a couple of years maybe, or if we do trade him, he's not going to have much value. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens there with that. Uh, Brian De Cruz has deep potential, so not anything super special there. But then Jesus Sanchez is their outfield prospect that this team has and, you know, played a little bit last year, but he's got good contact and he's got good stats against righties, and he's, you know, a player to watch out for for sure. Then we move over to right field, and Avicio Garcia is their starter, and he's not that great. He's just he's just okay. And then they have J.J. Blade, a prospect here in right field as well, who's got some pretty decent stats. He'll start the season in AAA, and we'll see what he can do down there. So overall, the offense, I think the offense needs a lot of work. Um, and right now, the offense for this team is just not, it's just not really there. It's just not very good. 
right now. And that's the that's the thing about this team is we need the this team needs offensive firepower. The offense just there's just not any superstars really. Um, when you look at the lineup for this team, but you know we'll see. Hopefully, I mean we're kind of counting on this pitching staff to carry us right now. That's what that's what they're going to be kind of counting on here in this series is this pitching staff just being crazy good because it is it's really good. I mean they got great ratings here. You see it 89, 83, 79, 76, and 74 for the ratings, and you know it's a good good starting rotation. The bullpen is bullpen is all right. Bullpen's nothing super special. I don't think. Um, you know, I didn't really even focus on a lot of these bullpen guys. Um, Laser Hernandez there is a long reliever, but you got Zach Pop, okay. Anthony Bass, who's decent with 94 home run hit per nine. That's a good rating, and he was decent last year with a 3-2 ERA. He's actually been pretty decent since, I mean, ever since 2018. Uh, he's been a good, he's gonna get a good bullpen arm. Uh, Cole Solcer is all right, nothing super special there. Tanner Scott probably not gonna do much. Uh, Richard Blair has 99 walk per nine, which is interesting, but he's all right. Anthony Bender. And then their closer, a closer for this year, is going to be Dylan Floro, who was very good in 64 innings last season for this team. But the bullpen is also another area where it's just not that great, and I think we need to improve this bullpen a lot um, here during over the course of this franchise because right now I don't think it's good enough. Uh, but then you go... You know, into that farm system, and you got Eric Herrera there um, in AAA, and I think I'm not sure what I'm going to do with Max Meyer. I might keep Max Meyer in AA at least for the beginning of the year, um, and then move him up to AAA. I might just have him start in AAA, but either way, uh, that's a look at the pitching rotation, and this is a look at the offense here. You got Birdie, De La, De La Cruz batting second there, and then you got Jazz Chisholm. He's going to be there, the third hole hitter. And then Jorge Soler, the power hitter at four, at four, Aguilar five, Jesus Sanchez at six, Wendell Garcia and Jacob Stallings rounding out the batting order. Then on the bench, Garrett Cooper, Brian Anderson, Miguel Rojas, and then the backup catcher, Peyton Henry. You know, it's just not a great offense. I mean, Jazz Chisholm right now has the best ratings on that lineup, but I'm going to, again, I'm going to be changing the ratings there, so... He's not even going to be a 95 overall. He's going to be probably an 80. I think he's like an 84 or something um, in the in the newest roster. So it's just not a great lineup. And that's the thing about this team that I that needs to be kind of improved upon is just the offense isn't great. And right now they're, you know, they got Chisholm and they got Sanchez. And that's really the only two offensive prospects that this team has right now and the only two guys that we can really be building around in the future so let's take a quick look at this depth chart feature i kind of like this feature it's it's nice um and it's it's kind of cool to see what the team kind of is going to look like you know a few years down the road from now if you just keep the players that you have so i'm um, just kind of looking at that but next episode guys is going to be opening day we're going to be playing the atlanta braves so the world series champions are on deck for the opening day game. So not going to be an easy opponent that the Marlins team is going to be facing uh, to start the season off. But again, guys, this is going to be super fun. Um, I'm super excited to start this franchise. And so just kind of explaining here, we will be doing, you know, I'll be controlling just the Marlins um, and I will be trading with the Marlins and I'm going to be doing very realistic trades. I'm going to try to make the trades in this franchise as realistic as possible. And, you know, I'm not going to try and cheese the system or anything like that. The trade slider is going to be turned way down uh, just because sometimes you can have some pretty ridiculous trades in this in, uh, in franchise mode. But so, yeah, I'll be just controlling. I'm not sure how long this is going to take. It's probably be like this will be at least a four five year franchise. We're going to try and build a dynasty here in Miami. And so I'm super, super excited for this franchise guys it's just something new for the channel and it's only the show 22 content finally so you guys have been waiting for as long as you could possibly can for that so uh, super excited about this franchise watch out for the opening day game guys you have to watch opening day uh it's one of the best episodes that i actually will ever i've ever recorded <laughs> it's such a good game so have a great day everybody you've been listening to lucas from mars remember to subscribe for new episodes of the franchise and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.